America. I don't know why I did that voice, but a while ago I did a first video on US state flags. I was thinking of doing a five part video series with 10 state flags on each, but I got to thinking who has time for five different videos. And if I did 47 for Japan, what's 50 for the US? So in this video, I'm going to go over the 50 state flags of the United States, plus maybe a few other regional ones. There are 50 states, so this is a long video. If you don't wanna bear through all of these explanations, although I'm keeping them very short and summarized, I posted a timestamp list for each state in the video description, so you can just skip ahead. We can divide US state flags into two main categories, and I think this will make it easier to go through the 50. There's the ones which are just a blue field with the state seal in the center, and the ones that are actually original and unique, although, sometimes similar as well. For instance, the flag of Alabama is pretty much the same as Florida. The Florida saltire is just slightly thicker and bears the state seal. So let's go one by one learning about the history and meaning of the US state flags. In the bottom right corner, I'll also add the NAVA ranking of the flags, which is the North American Vexillological Association, and they did a ranking of all US state flags a while back. Starting with the originals. First, with one that isn't too original in the colors or symbols that it uses, but is definitely original in its shape. Ohio. It is a triangular swallowtail flag. The only non-rectangular US state flag and one of the few in the world that doesn't take up rectangular shape. The flag was adopted in 1902. Before that, for nearly a century after statehood, Ohio did not have a legally authorized flag. Five stripes, three red and two white, and a blue triangle filled with a white and red O and 17 white stars. The O stands for Ohio, but apparently also represents the original Old Northwest Territory. The reason why they have this shape might have to do with the fact that this was a typical flag carried by Ohio cavalry units in war back when they didn't have a state flag, perhaps starting the swallowtail usage. Next, the probably most well-known state flag, California. California dates back to its rebelling against Mexico and briefly existing as an independent republic. It was called the Bear Flag Revolt in 1846, and they used an earlier version of the current flag, which apparently had the bear standing up. The flag has a star, a grizzly bear, and a red stripe with the words California Republic. The star came from an even earlier revolt against Mexico where the California Lone Star flag was used in 1836. As for the bear, it's apparently a grizzly or a black bear, which I guess are common in the area, representing their early fight against Mexico for independence. A fun fact is that it resembles the coat of arms of the city of Bern in Switzerland, from which a man called John Sutter was from. John Sutter was one of the people who founded Fort Sutter, paving the way for the Californian gold rush, American migration to the West, and a future creation of California as we know it. So the creation of that original flag might have been in his honor. Another extremely well-known one, and speaking of lone stars, is Texas. Three stripes, one vertical in blue, and two horizontal in red and white. Within the blue stripe, a white lone star. This one also dates back to the time Texas became independent as it fought off its Mexican rulers. The flag was adopted on January 25th of 1839 as the national flag of the Republic of Texas. The usage of the colors perhaps has to do with its desire to join the United States. The lone star comes from their independent times. In fact, the very first flag of the Republic of Texas, known as the National Standard, was a blue field with a yellow star in the center. Apparently, there was also a proposed flag like this with green stripes, a red star, and a canton in this design. Also consisting of red, white, and blue, but bearing the flag of the US's former colonizing rulers of Britain, Hawaii. It is the only US state flag to include a foreign country's national flag, and this is because it had already been the flag of Hawaii before it became a territory and then state of the US. Back when it was its own kingdom. The inclusion of the Union Jack of the United Kingdom is a mark of the British Empire's historical relations with the Hawaiian king. During the late 18th century, he flew a British flag over his kingdom after receiving it as a gift from King 
George III. But by the War of 1812, it had been replaced with an American flag. This upset British officers in the king's court, and eventually the flag was removed. As a compromise, the king commissioned the flag we're familiar with today, incorporating both nations by way of color and design. The eight stripes also represent the eight major islands of the archipelago. And then we have Alaska, the other offshore state, if you will. The state flag of Alaska displays eight gold stars forming the Big Dipper and Polaris constellation. The Big Dipper one is a part of the Ursa Major constellation, symbolizing a bear, an animal indigenous to Alaska. It was selected from over 700 entries in a 1927 contest, and this was the one made by a 13-year-old contestant and winner. Next, Arizona. Their flag consists of 13 rays of red and yellow on the top half to represent the original 13 colonies. These colors symbolize Arizona's landscape and may also also refer to the Spanish colors since the area was under Spanish rule during colonial times. The center star represents the state's unmatched copper production. Right by it is another original one, New Mexico. A yellow and golden field with a red symbol in the center and this is the ancient Zia Sun symbol. The Zia are the native people of the region, highlighting the state's Native American and Spanish roots, also reminding us of the colors of the Spanish. It is one of only four US state flags to not contain the color blue, along with Alabama, California, and Maryland, and it's the only one of those without blue and white. It was chosen in a contest in 1920, won by an archaeologist who was familiar with the Zia symbols. The symbol itself is related to the number four, the four directions, the four times of day, the four stages of life, and the four seasons, and the circle binds the four elements of four together. Before this official flag, they just had an unofficial one, which was just absolutely awful. Above it, Colorado. Blue, white, and blue. On top of it, a red sea standing for Colorado, filled with a golden circle. The blue is meant to represent the skies, gold, the sunshine, white, the snow-capped mountains, and the red for the ruddy earth of the land. Their first flag was just the state seal, which they thankfully changed. See Vermont? It's possible. Going even further north from there, Wyoming. Wyoming is a special case for a flag because they use their seal, but they also stylize the banner. It has two frames, one outer in red, which symbolizes the Native Americans and the blood of pioneers who gave their lives, and the other inner one in white. A blue field and then the silhouette of an American bison. The fact that the seal is on it represents the custom of branding livestock. The bison is centered, but the seal on it is not, which bothers me a little bit. And at this point, we're surrounded by blue fields and state seals, so we need to go further east to Iowa. A vertical tricolor of blue, white, and red reflecting their history as a part of the French Louisiana territory. The image of a bald eagle with a long ribbon reading, our liberties we prize and our rights we will maintain, derived from their seal. To the east of it is Illinois. Illinois actually has a sealed flag, but looking at it initially, I thought it was stylized, probably because the seal itself is somewhat stylized as well, and it uses a white background instead of a blue. Then Missouri, three equal horizontal tribands of red, white, and blue with the arms of Missouri in the center. They had an earlier flag which consisted of a light blue field with a golden version of the seal. I honestly prefer that one. Next is Arkansas, a red field in a blue lozang frame and a white inner lozang. On the blue are 25 small white stars and on the white, four additional larger blue ones. The lozang is said to represent the fact that they were at the time the only state with a diamond mine. The 25 stars represent their 25th place in joining the Union. The star above represents the Confederacy and the three stars below represent the three nations it was a part of, France, Spain, and the US. Next, Tennessee, which has a similar color scheme and design. A red field, blue and white vertical stripes on the right. A blue circle in a white frame with three stars inside it. The stars represent the three geographic divisions of Tennessee, east, middle, and center, united inside the circle as they are inside 
the state. Below Tennessee, we have two states. One is Mississippi, which like we saw is currently changing its flag. The earliest Mississippi flag looked like Texas a little. A red frame, a blue canton with a white star and a white field that had a tree in it. During America's internal conflict of the North versus the South, they used a new flag, a red, white and blue horizontal tricolor with the battle flag of the South in its canton. Because of this association of the symbol with very negative things, they decided to change it this year, holding a contest. There were five finalists, and as far as I could tell, after the result of an online poll and a decision of the committee in charge of the replacement, the new state flag will be the one on the thumbnail for this video. A red, white, blue, and gold flag with the state flower in the center. A pretty cool flag in my opinion, and obviously a significant improvement on the previous one. Moving to Alabama, a red cross of St. Andrew on a white field. It is said to be designed as the South's battle flag was. However, at the time of their secession, they had a different one. Blue with text in yellow saying independent now and forever. Below it was the goddess of liberty holding another flag with the name of the state, and a single star. The reverse of that 1861 flag presented a cotton plant with a snake and the words in Latin, touch me not. Bordering it with, as I mentioned, an almost equal flag is Florida. Almost equal except it bears the coat of arms of the state. But the inspiration here might be different, or at least doubled. Florida was a Spanish colonial possession for a long time, part of the Viceroyalty of New Spain, whose flag was a red cross of Burgundy. Before having this current flag, Florida flew a flag that looks like Liberia's current one in 1861, then changing a couple times until the present one since the year 1900. And above it, Georgia. Three stripes in red, white, red with a blue canton containing a ring of 13 white stars and inside it, the state's coat of arms in gold. The 13 stands for the original 13 colonies, something we see is a trend in US state flags, even when they aren't one of those original 13. The colors, beside being those of the national flag, come from militia and soldier regiments banners, who took the battle two standards, both bearing the coat of arms, some with a blue background and some with a red. Here we can keep going up the east coast into the Carolinas. First, South Carolina, a blue field plus a white palm tree and crescent. The design exists since 1775 and is based on one of the flags used during the American Revolution against the British. This is the Moultrie slash Liberty flag. The crescent is often mistaken for a moon, but its origin is apparently the military uniforms who wore a silver crescent on the front of their caps. The tree was added in 1861 as a reference to the heroic defense of a palmetto log fort by Colonel Moultrie against the British, a type of wood which apparently was strong in resisting British cannons. And then North Carolina, with the traditional national colors, the state initials, and a star. The dates presented are those of the Mecklenburg Declaration of Independence in 1775 and the Halifax Resolves in 1776, two events which were key in America's independence process. West Virginia is next, a white field bordered by a blue stripe with the coat of arms of West Virginia in the center. Another example of how you can still use the coat of arms, but at least in a graphically pleasing way. Although it could of course still be better. Then Maryland. Their flag is the 17th century heraldic banner of Cecil Calvert, second baron of Baltimore and first proprietor and founder of the Maryland territory. For a while after the revolution, they stopped using these since Calvert was a colonist of the British. But in 1904, they reinstated it. Oddly, during the US's internal conflict, Northern troops used the gold and black pattern while Southern ones used the red and white side. And now we get into the territory of state emblem flags, but with a different background color other than blue, like we saw Illinois was an example of. Delaware is also one of those, a field of colonial blue and a coat of arms of Delaware inside a lozenge. The date below is the date in which Delaware became the first state to rectify the US constitution. The choice of colors is also supposed to reflect the colors used by George Washington in his uniform. New Jersey follows the trend, a field of gold, this time 
and then the coat of arms of the state. Being designed in 1777 and displayed the date of 1776, the year of their statehood, between their state motto of liberty and prosperity. Massachusetts has a white flag with the blue seal on it, and they also have an alternate flag which is triangular. Between 1908 and 1971, they had a reverse to the flag which honestly looks much better. Their current variant is simply a green tree on a white field, which is also pretty good. The shield depicts a Native American man with a bow and arrow and the arrow is pointed downward signifying peace, plus adding a symbol of a silver star. And finally on the opposite coast, the state of Washington. The state flag of Washington consists of the state seal displaying an image of George Washington himself on a field of dark green. And then we have the not so much original ones which are as I previously mentioned the ones that just use a blue field with the state's coat of arms or emblem on top of it. The tones of blue change a lot and the emblems obviously have their own individual meaning, artistic worth and symbolic depth. But come on guys, be a little more original and design new unique flags as well. I'm not saying the seals aren't cool, a lot of them are, it's just that they could incorporate those symbols and history slash meaning into way better looking simplified designs as some have already done. For these next remaining 24, I'm just going to go alphabetically. The flag of the state of Connecticut is a white baroque shield with three grapevines, each bearing three branches of purple grapes on a field of blue. The banner below the shields reads Qui Transtulet Sustinet, which is Latin for he who transplanted sustains. The three grape branches represent the three oldest settlements, Windsor, Wethersfield, and Hartford. I didn't pay much attention to the state seals on the previous flags, the ones that are more original, but I kind of have to here because there's really nothing more to the flag. Next we have Idaho, being designed by Emma Edward Green, the only woman to design a state seal. The seal depicts a woman and a man representing equality, liberty and justice. The symbols on the seal represent some of Idaho's natural resources and industries with the Latin motto Esto Perpetua, it is forever, depicting the elk protected by law by the state. Moving to Indiana, this one is actually not a seal on blue, but I thought it was since it uses such a strange design. It's in fact different from the seal, which is similar to other states representing their landscape. A golden torch, the state name, and 19 stars, with the one above the torch being larger as to represent Indiana's admission into the Union as the 19th state. The torch represents liberty and enlightenment. Kansas's city flag is their seal, the state name, and a sunflower on top which is the state flower. Below it is a stripe of blue and gold, said to represent the Louisiana Purchase which made the territory of Kansas part of the United States, with the state motto Ad Astra Per Aspera, meaning to the stars through difficulties. There's also a variant flag with four white or silver stars in each corner. Kentucky's flag consists of their seal on a navy blue field surrounded by the words Commonwealth of Kentucky above and springs of goldenrod, the state flower below. The seal depicts a pioneer and a statesman embracing with the motto united we stand divided we fall. Popular belief states that the man on the left is Daniel Boone, an early explorer of Kentucky, and the man on the right is Henry Clay, Kentucky's most famous statesman. But the official explanation is that the men represent all frontiersmen and statesmen rather than any specific people. Louisiana's flag consists of a mother pelican in her nest feeding the young, with the state motto below, Union, Justice, Confidence, having been adopted in 1912. There was an unofficial state flag which was inspired in the French one, the early colonial rulers of the territory, adding seven white stars on the blue stripe on the left. It is also pointed out by some that the mother pelican with her wings forms a stylized fleur-de-lis, an historical French symbol. The flag of Maine is just their coat of arms as we can see here, very similar to all the others with people supporting it, animals and nature being present. However, they do have an alternate flag, their naval ensign, being one of the few states that has one. And it's really cool, it consists of a tree and an anchor, still with a state motto dirigo, meaning I lead. If they were to remove the letters, I think this would be a good definite change 
for their flag. The same situation repeats itself with Michigan displaying the state emblem on their flag. A blue shield with the sun rising over a lake and peninsula. A man with a raised hand representing peace and holding a long gun representing the fight for the frontier state. On the sides, the elk and moose are inspired by the Hudson Bay Company coat of arms. They also have a Orion flag in white background with three mottos. First, the US motto up top, then Tuebor, meaning I will defend, and then the longer one, which is the official state motto, which means if you seek a pleasant peninsula, look about you. Minnesota used to have a really complicated seal and they had to simplify it to allow for easier reproduction on that flag. However, it's still really complicated with way too many elements and honestly a weird combination of colors and tones. Montana just depicts the seal on blue. Within it are a plow, a shovel and a pick resting in front of the Great Falls of the Missouri River. Below is the state motto Oro y Plata, which is Spanish for gold and silver. Nebraska displays a version of its original 1867 seal, a train with mountains in the distance, a steamboat on the Missouri River, a blacksmith working at his anvil, and a state motto, equality before the law. Nebraska was one of the last states to adopt an official flag only in 1925. Nevada is an exception because it uses the state seal but not centered. It is in the top left corner and smaller than usual. The emblem contains a silver star in reference to the state's nickname, the Silver State. Above the star are the words Battle Born, one of the state's mottos because Nevada became a state during America's internal conflict. They also have a Orion flag with the emblem in the center and four additional silver stars in each corner. New Hampshire state seal depicts the frigate USS Raleigh, one of the first ships of the US Navy built in 1776, the date which is also shown. Also being surrounded by a laurel wreath with nine stars since it was the ninth state of the United States. New York seal is depicted on their flag too. Formally adopted a long time ago in 1778, it originally had a golden background. We see a number of symbols and elements in the shield, a ship on the Hudson River bordered by nature with a smiling sun rising behind it. It's supported by two figures on the left, Liberty with the revolutionary imagery of a Phrygian cap, stepping on a crown to represent the victory over British rule. On the right, Justice, wearing a blindfold to represent impartiality and holding scales representing fairness and then the Sword of Justice, with the motto Excelsior, meaning higher, at the bottom. Above it is an eagle on top of a globe. The design for the flag of the state of North Dakota is an almost exact copy of the unit banner carried by the state's troop contingent in the Philippine-American War. It's a blue field depicting an adaptation of the Great Seal of the United States, not even the state's own seal. If there are some state flags in desperate need of a change, this is definitely one of them. It has basically zero local symbolism. Oklahoma's flag is actually really cool, and I think some minor changes like changing the background color, removing the text, and simplifying the symbol would make it amazing. This symbol is a traditional Ozage Nation buffalo skin shield with seven eagle feathers, also being covered by two symbols of peace, a ceremonial peace pipe to represent Native Americans and an olive branch to represent European settlers. Behind are six brown crosses, the native symbols for stars. The blue field is apparently inspired in an original native Choctaw flag used in the late 1800s. One of the few flags that has two sides is Oregon, with the reverse being a golden badger. The front depicts the state seal, name, and year of statehood. In 2009, they held a contest to redesign the flag, and this one got the most votes. However, none of the above got even more votes, so the flag remained the same. The 33 stars represent the number of states when Oregon became part of the Union. The remaining symbols are for the US and local landscape and industry. Oregon's earliest seal was literally of a salmon, so maybe they could do a new salmon flag? Pennsylvania has a variant with a white background, but usually blue is used. With our coat of arms having been adopted as early as 1798, the American Eagle tops a shield that depicts Pennsylvania's strengths, such as commerce and agriculture, with the state motto, virtue, liberty, and independence. Rhode Island is a great example of how states can still use their seal as a flag, but in a better designed way than just throwing it on top of a blue field. A white field, a golden anchor, and a word, hope, surrounded 
by 13 golden stars, perhaps in representation of the 13 original colonies. The same thing we see on the state seal, but better adapted into a flag. Rhode Island was founded in 1636, and since then, the anchor and the word hope were present on the local seal. Some say being inspired by the biblical phrase, hope we have as an anchor for the soul. They had a couple other flags before, but always in the same style, only changing the design. South Dakota uses a different and in my opinion, better tone of blue. An old one didn't have the seal and only a sun with the title of Sunshine State, which apparently was since changed to Mount Rushmore State. As usual, the date represents the year of statehood, depicting local landscape and industries in the emblem. In 2012, there was an official proposal to change the flag into this. It's not great, but I think they do need to change it. The early Utah flag consisted of a copy of the national flag with their state seal in the top left canton, but eventually they changed it to this current basic one. A bald eagle, the national bird of the United States, symbolizes protection in peace and war. The sego lily, the state flower, represents peace, and the motto is industry, with the beehive representing progress and hard work. The date of 1847 represents the year the Mormon pioneers entered Salt Lake Valley, while 1896 represents the year that it was admitted as the 45th state. This is why there's 45 stars throughout the two American flags. The beehive is usually associated with the area. In fact, the very short-lived Deseret State used it as one of its symbols. Vermont uses this flag since 1923. Originally, the flag was the same as that of the Green Mountain Boys of the short-lived Vermont Republic. On the sides, the pines represent these small pine branches worn at the Battle of Plattsburgh in the War of 1812, and the large tree in the seal represents the local forests. The animals represent their wildlife using the motto freedom and unity, a balance between individual rights and the welfare of common good. It's very unoriginal, so if I were them, I would revert to a modernized version of the original green flag. In May of 1776, the Virginia colony declared its independence from Great Britain. A month later, they designed a seal now present on the flag. A female figure personifying the Roman figure of virtue was selected to represent the new commonwealth. It represents peace, standing over her defeated opponent, tyranny, which in that case is Great Britain. The crown represents the fallen monarchy authority of the British over America. The purple robes of the fallen tyrant are said to be in reference to Julius Caesar. In fact, the motto Six Semper Tyrannis in English, thus always the tyrants, is a derived quote from the famous event in Roman history attributed to Brutus upon his participation in the assassination of Julius Caesar the Roman tyrant. And last but not least, Wisconsin, designed originally in 1886 when regiments of the state wanted a battle flag. It's interesting how the origin of flags tends to be battle standards in medieval Europe and Asia, and hundreds of years later, we also have an example of that. The flag is a navy blue field with the Wisconsin coat of arms in the center and the words Wisconsin in 1848. The date I assume was when the state joined the Union. On the top of the coat of arms, there is a badger and the state motto forward. In the center is the US coat of arms. On the sides, two figures to represent labor on land and water, plus 13 lead ingots representing both mineral wealth and the original 13 colonies of the US. Other than the states, we also have some territorial flags of the US, which are interesting to take a look at because a couple of them might soon be state flags, as the territories they represent continue to fight to achieve statehood within the Union. Examples of this are Puerto Rico, the territory most likely to soon become a state, whose flag is this one. It comes from the early Puerto Rico revolt against the Spanish in 1860. 68, being modeled after the Cuban flag. Before this, they briefly used the Ladish revolutionary flag in equal colors, but different design. Washington DC, the federal district, their flag references the coat of arms of the Washington family, dating all the way back to 14th century England and making its way to represent the US's first president, George Washington. Having been named after the founding father, it makes sense that the flag also represents his heritage, but also other territories. American Samoa uses an awesome eagle flag representing the US and Samoa's traditional colors. The eagle is holding two Samoan symbols, a war club and a flying whisk. Guam follows the trend of blue plus the local emblem, although adding a red frame which represents the blood shed by locals during World War II and Spanish occupation. Northern Mariana also has a blue field standing for the Pacific Ocean and then three symbols. The star represents the United States, the Latte stone represents their native people 
and a wreath around him represents another group of natives. The Virgin Island flag is a simplified version of the American coat of arms with the initials of the territory, the three blue arrows on the right as opposed to the 13 present on the US's actual seal represent the three major islands that make up the territory. And on top of that we have the Native American flags, representing either native nations or specific reservations. The flag of the Navajo Nation, which depicts a rainbow, plus four mountains in white, blue, yellow, and black. With the Navajo reservation map in orange, the four mountains maybe symbolize the fact that their territory spans across the four corner states of Arizona, New Mexico, and Utah. The flag of the Ozaga Nation, the light blue perhaps refers to the Sky People, one of the two clans into which the Ozage were traditionally divided. The other clan was the Earth People. Centered on the flag is the circular tribal seal in gold, which depicts an arrowhead, and on it is a prayer fan composed of eagle feathers and also a red peace pipe is present. The Ozagi have also influenced the state flag of Oklahoma, which we saw earlier, bearing an Ozage shield of the tribal chief. The one for the Uinta and Ore reservation is this one. The eagle is the messenger of the creator in Ute mythology, displayed on the flag as a protector of their people. It is also grasping a peace pipe with its claws. The three silhouettes represent the three main Ute bands, and the original 12 bands of the tribe are represented by those 12 hanging feathers. The Tohono O'odham nation's flag, which reflects their reservation's topography and flora, a bicolor of yellow over purple, represents the sun breaking over a distant purple mesa, also displaying a red staff with 11 feathers hanging from it. These stand for the 11 districts into which the huge reservation is divided. The flag of the Cherokee Nation, which contains their seal, a seven-pointed star, recalling the seven original clans of the Cherokee people. The seven stars around it hold the same meaning, but also represent the seven holidays in the Cherokee life cycle and the seven sacred rites of the native Cherokee religion. The black star is a reminder of the native people who lost their lives in the forced relocations they suffered. The branch around the seal represents the sacred eternal fire kindled from its wood. At the base of the orange ring is the date of 1839, the date of the constitution of the Cherokee Nation in Oklahoma. And also, finally, Hopi Nation's flag, a blue, white, and gold tricolor, a great combination of colors in my opinion. The blue stands for the traditional crops of their people, white for purity and balance, and yellow for the many flowers and their spirits. In the center is their main symbol, the Tuwakatsi, which stands for the earth. Below and around it are two mountains and stalks of corn, their traditional main food source. So that was a not so quick overview of the United States state and territorial flags. How some of them are so similar, how many are incredibly original, and how one of them is still in the process of change. Giving us hope that all those blue fields and emblems might soon be replaced by other flags, which better and more simply represent their great states. How a few of these flags came to be, how they evolved, and what they mean. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you want me to do videos on other countries' territorial flags, like I did for Japan and now the US, just let me know in the comments below. Subscribe if you want, and I will see you next time for more general knowledge.